Wikimedia LGBT Plus is a Wikimedia community affiliate organization. Here we are in late 2023, and I'm part of the governance committee of this organization, and with the other members of governance, we're formalizing the organization. I'm going to tell the story of what it means to be and have and experience a Wikipedia community organization and why it matters. My name is Lane Raspberry. How do you do? I edit Wikipedia as user Blue Raspberry. I'm a researcher, data scientist at the School of Data Science at the University of Virginia. And as I said, I'm one of the people on the governance committee of Wikimedia LGBT. Wikipedia is unusual among the major internet platforms for being community governed. What does community governed mean? It means that the Wikipedia community of content creators, the users who register accounts and participate in the platform, have governance authority and power over the direction of the entire project. So for example, Supposing the people who post to Instagram or Facebook for comparison, or users of Reddit, or YouTube, or any other online platform that you can think of, supposing they didn't like the parent organization or the governance direction or a decision by the company that owns those platforms. If they didn't like it, then Maybe there's ways that they can do something called a user revolt. You can look those up to see the extent to which any have been successful. But it's up to the leadership of those platforms to set the rules. They can do whatever they want. It's, it's, it's their option. They own it. It's commercially operated. The users have to take it. They can take it or leave it. That's, that's their option. Whereas in, in Wikipedia, the actual editors and users have significant governance authority. I'm not going to here describe the limits of that authority, but some things that I'll say is that when donors give money to Wikipedia, they intend for that money to go to the Wikipedia community. This has always been the thought. And that where ethics and values are to be set and determined and discussed, those ethics and values are legitimate when they come from the community and no one else can impose those on the community or override what the community has to say about ethics and values. The community's way of organization is to break up by interest or region, some kind of affiliation, where small groups of people, smaller groups of people, smaller than the whole, organize to have conversations among themselves and set ethics and values and strategically plan what is the direction for developing Wikipedia content. One way that community members organize is, is by location, by, by region. So one kind of a community affiliate organization is at the national level. There's Wikipedia chapters per country where anyone in that country can join and then they convene conversations and activities for all the people in that country. So a great many countries have, have this, kind of, this kind of organization. Wikimedia LGBT isn't by country. It's a global organization. And it's for people who are LGBT, who develop LGBT content in the Wikipedia platforms, or who make some kind of contribution to LGBT interests outside of the Wikipedia platform. So it's broadly LGBT people and interested in LGBT T topics and who actually contribute to them. Why do we need an organization? It's because somebody needs to organize activities that are in the, in the interest of LGBT people. Somebody needs to identify issues of interest, which members of Wikimedia LGBT might want to discuss. And then the organization as a collective sometimes needs to issue organizational positions, clearly say that we found some, some sort of consensus among our membership. 
and here's how we, we feel about a certain issue or here's a decision that we're going to collectively take. We're able to organize the community and collectively negotiate where that, that's useful or helpful. What are some alternatives to having a group? Like what would happen if we didn't do this? Why is this so necessary to do? In the case of LGBT, in the case of a, a great many interests, there are people who for different interests are ready to speak on behalf of, of Wikipedia's LGBT community. And these people can be anywhere in the world. They can be with a commercial tech organization like Google, have nothing to do with Wikipedia really, but issue, issue opinions, say this is what's good for the LGBT community. Or they could be with a government, they could be with some other community organization, they could be within the Wikipedia community, but if a community isn't organized to represent itself, and if that community is influential in society, then you can just expect and believe that people are going to step up, and with a lot of nerve, they're going to say, I, I represent this community, and here I'm going to speak on behalf of this community, and they'll start taking positions. If you don't represent yourself, then somebody is going to speak for you, especially if, if your community is valuable in, in different ways. And the LGBT community is, is valuable politically, like positions that people take on LGBT issues win, win elections at national government levels. So LGBT issues are very important for politics. And if you win an election, then you also win the national treasury of a, of a nation, of a country. So a lot of money at stake on these LGBT issues. That's not why, th that's not why LGBT people organized or got started in this, but it's, it's on our mind that for whatever reason, uh, a huge percentage of the world is talking about LGBT issues when they ought to mind their own business. Another thing is that sometimes you don't see yourself represented appropriately. And if you don't see yourself represented, then you have the option to represent yourself. While I wish that there were a super professional out there who would always work and advocate for my interests and say all the things that I want them to say, that person hasn't stepped up. In the Wikipedia community, we have this value and this principle that anyone can edit. And if something's not the way that you want it to be, just like you can edit a Wikipedia article, you can also edit a position paper and propose it to the Wikimedia LGBT community and say, let's all take this position on this issue. Let's issue a statement that this is, this is in the interest of the LGBT community. Let's, let's have a conversation. Let's talk this through. So we've been talking about this for years. We, the, the, the people who've been organizing this, this Wikimedia LGBT thing, and we're, we're formalizing the organization. I'm giving you this information. It's the story of Wiki LGBT, but this is actually the story of a lot of these Wikimedia community organizations. So let me tell you where we are and let me tell you where we're going. Let me tell you what I'm expecting of this. Wikimedia LGBT as an informal organization was established in 2012. Here we are in 2013, 20, 2023. It's been, been 11 years of talking about this. I was, I was one of the people who, who established the LGBT community organization in, in the Wikimedia platform, and I've been organizing meetings for it with other people the, the, the entire time. And I'll get to the social and ethical issues that we address, but they, they've been never ending. People always bring issues and say, let's discuss this important issue that affects people at scale. So they'll bring in one problem, but if, if, they, if they know enough to bring a problem to us, Probably they've got the idea that this isn't just their personal problem. This is a problem that because when things happen on the internet, they can happen to over and over and over again around the world for, for many years repeatedly. Digital platforms reproduce things for free at scale to anyone who, who goes to websites. So people can keep having these recurring experiences in these virtual spaces in a way that, that, that doesn't happen when you're out of virtual spaces. Things scale, things repeat automatically because it, inter internet publishing is never ending. And 
the way that it's always been imagined that we would formalize is that we have a membership list and determine who's part of Wikimedia LGBT and who's not going to be in Wikimedia LGBT. After we have a membership, then we organize an election, say that anyone who's a member can stand for candidacy and run for trustee of the organization and we'll have a, an election of the membership. Nothing so unusual about that. Nonprofit organizations, non-governmental organizations that are registered, they, they do this as well. But we do this inside the Wikimedia platform and instead of it being a local community in one city where we all know these people or even national where everybody's from the same national culture, Wikimedia LGBT is a, a global organization, meaning multinational, multilingual, multicultural, as diverse as you can imagine. And that is rather unusual. If you think about nonprofit organizations, non-governmental organizations, which among them really has leadership that they elect with people who know each other on the internet from, from every country speaking every language, and then elevate these people to governance. What do you do when you get to governance? Well, you get access to speak on behalf of this community. As I said, there's also a certain amount of money involved. And we're offered a grant by the Wikimedia Foundation. The Wikimedia Foundation is the nonprofit steward of the Wikimedia projects. They process donations. If you donate to Wikipedia, if anyone donates to Wikipedia, money goes to the Wikimedia Foundation and the Wikimedia Foundation through community governance, reallocates that money to organizations that apply for grants. So those national organizations that I mentioned, they get grants from the Wikimedia Foundation. And Wikimedia LGBT is planning to receive its first administrative grant from the Wikimedia Foundation with intent that it will perpetually have paid staff administration to organize some activities. Why are we doing this now and why didn't we do this before? It's been challenging to establish consensus in the LGBT community. If you can imagine, say, Wikimedia Deutschland, Wikimedia Germany. Something that many of its members have in common is they speak the German language and they almost all live in, live in Germany. They have some cultural connections, whereas LGBT community, we were in agreement that we shouldn't proceed until we get language diversity, cultural diversity, get people up to speed from, from multiple communities. And when I say the global LGBT community, even if you're LGBT, if you consume LGBT media, watch TV shows, read books, participate online, Maybe you know something about LGBT community in the United States and some in maybe the United Kingdom, maybe some in Germany or France. What do you know about the LGBT community in Brazil, in Argentina, in India, in Nigeria, in China? There's a lot of other countries. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make options for everybody to participate in this group together? And I can't say that we have all the solutions, but I can say that we put a sufficient amount of labor to come to consensus that we're going to proceed with a membership process, have an election, and try to try to be better every year. We get a certain amount of sponsorship from the Wikimedia Foundation to coordinate this. And one of the things that is less controversial about how to spend the money is to spend a certain amount of money on convening online meetings and providing translation services so that LGBT people, developers of LGBT Wikipedia content, from whatever culture they are, we can provide translation so that they can speak in their own language and it gets translated to English, so that if somebody's got something to say in English or Spanish, that it gets translated into their language. Translators at hand, money, money will be used for this kind of thing. How did we get to this point? Well, we had a lot of informal online conversations for many years and did the best that we could. And we got to a point where we needed bigger conversations with more people, more formality, more documentation, more scheduling. And for the past few years, 
we've organized an event called Queering Wikipedia, an online conference. It's a conference. It's got multiple speaking tracks at different times. You go into an online space and you can say, I want to go to this talk or this talk. And it's happening in these virtual rooms. Speakers are scheduled. They prepare their slides. They prepare their talks for weeks or months in advance, know what they're going to say. They've already applied to speak at this conference. We have a program committee that fills up the schedule. It's a, it's a convention. It's a conference. It's very, very traditional and typical. We have this online. We talk about difficult issues. And if you want to see what's discussed at these conferences, you can look at the programs of, of past ones. You can look at some of the recorded talks. Some of the talks are private because LGBT people have a lot of safety concerns. So they're not on there. We try to be as open and transparent about everything that we can. And in the course of these conferences, we identify the important issues for our community, talk about how we're going to spend money, what kind of membership process are we going to have, do we really want elections? Yes, we do. And here we are. We've arrived at the time. We're going to apply for a grant. We have applied for a grant. We're going to have a membership process. We're going to have an elections, and we're going to keep doing this perpetually for as long as it's useful. Once you get established as a Wikimedia community organization, what do you do? What is what is the what are the particular characteristics of a Wikipedia community organization? How would it differ from any other kind of nonprofit organization? One of the things that I, I mentioned about Wiki LGBT that's pretty unusual as compared to any other LGBT community organization that you can think of is the, the multilinguality and the multicultural uh, effort in this. It happens that Wikipedia's strength is in publishing content. That's one of one of its strengths. Also convening the community that, that can publish content. So I'm talking about Wikipedia articles. You're familiar with these. General reference information about LGBT, LGBT issues, LGBT rights, LGBT rights by country, different biographies of people, events, history, what, whatever you want to say. There's Wikipedia articles. You can go look them up. And Wikimedia LGBT is and the kind of organization that can help if you need an institutional organizational partner, a little staff support, to take these community organized grassroots campaigns and if they grow to the point of needing a little more organization, then it's helpful to have some paid staff in an organization to, to help support them in different ways. A, a common kind of support that will happen is you might have a community center, a university, a library, cultural center, a museum, maybe even a corporation say, I'd like to have a partnership to support local Wikipedia community editors in developing information, perhaps for Gay Pride Month. Can we host an event for Gay Pride Month where we invite your volunteers into our space, we'll give them snacks, we'll give them, give them support, and we'll, everyone edits Wikipedia articles in a, in a room together. So this is a, a Wikipedia community activity that people like, an editing campaign. It can be online, it can be in person, there's so many different ways. But it helps because we've tried it every which way sometimes to have an organization to, to help put these things on. So that, that's a, a very common, very understandable thing that happens with these organizations. They support the editing of Wikipedia. Supposing in the course of editing Wikipedia, you keep repeatedly finding some problem that happens over and over again. Like, for example, supposing you keep getting reports that when people edit Wikipedia articles about LGBT topics, or that they say that they themselves are LGBT and just happen to be editing Wikipedia on any topic, and weirdos come out of the internet from wherever they come from and they start harassing them for being LGBT. LGBT hate mongers come and bother Wikipedians for editing LGBT articles. Then it's nice for an organization that's going to advocate for LGBT people to give people advice, support, victim support, or develop policies about what do you do in these kinds of situations. And we've received enough of these reports for enough years, ask for help from all kinds of other organizations, and while it is nice when you have national wiki community organizations give some support, any support that they give is going to be for their entire constituency. There's enough LGBT people in the world, enough LGBT Wikipedia editors, enough of these complaints that justify us establishing an organization to advocate for our membership for harassment for LGBT harassment specifically. It, it happens enough. We need, we need our own organization. 
There's every kind of harassment. So many different types. So many different circumstances. So many patterns of misconduct. We can talk about that another time. You can go to Wikimedia LGBT and join these conversations if you want to know the different flavors and colors of this thing. An organization can convene a forum, convene a discussion to decide what we're going to do about this. When we have a discussion, different no, people are going to disagree. Somebody's going to say do this, somebody's going to say do this. You talk, talk about it for a time, people come to agree on some things, they continue to disagree on other things. Mm -hmm. It becomes a discourse, it's multifaceted. People have ideas in different directions. But at some point, someone's got to call the conversation, say, we can continue talking, but we need to put a pin on this somewhere. And we're going to say that at this point, here was a consensus. Here's where we are. Keep talking. But when we present to the outside world what it is we've discussed, here's a, a, a summary statement of where we are and, and, and what we think we, we have agreement about. And it's very useful to have a formal organization to judge consensus, especially if the conversation is happening in multiple languages. Because while you might get volunteers who can sort out consensus in one language, it's a lot of administrative labor to coordinate trans to coordinate the convening of a conversation that happens in multiple languages, in multiple places, at different times, translate them all, come up with a consensus, send all that back to the respective community stakeholders to get their secondary approval, and then issue it publicly. We need an organization to do this. In addition to harassment, I'm just going to throw out some of the other perennial issues that get discussed in so many different languages. Wikipedia has a lot of biographies. LGBT includes the T, transgender. How do we manage transgender pronouns and biographies? If somebody started their life and were assigned at birth a gender and some pronouns and a name, but later in life they change those things, how do you manage their biography? I'll just say it's complex. Different people have different needs. It depends on the person. We need some rules to, as guiding principles. We've talked with every LGBT expert organization that we can think might have issued an opinion, and nothing quite fits what Wikipedia's need is. We have to come up with our own rules for these things, and it's something that having an organization that can be in this massive global conversation it would be helpful for. And there's a lot of community de demand and interest in sorting this out. How do we get support for Minority groups, I told you that there's Wikipedia editors around the world, LGBT people all over the world. In the age before internet, if you look in the older books, the LGBT rights movement is told as a story that happened in certain capital cities or big cities. And the truth is that LGBT rights activism has happened in Certainly every major city in the world, every tier two city in the world, so it's not a major one, but still a pretty big one. And if you look, even in many smaller cities in the world, some kind of LGBT rights activism. If someone wants to know the story of LGBT history, LGBT culture, they shouldn't judge themselves by what happened in New York City. It's okay for you to look to your own culture, your own language community, your own activists, your own history. But places like New York City are overrepresented in this, this narrative. And it's just inappropriate to have everybody in the world, wherever you are, look at what happened in New York City. I like New York. It's, it's a really fun place. But it's not everybody's culture. We need a certain amount of money to send, especially to lower and middle income countries. 
So a lot of the donations to Wikipedia, they come from wealthier countries. It's nice when donations come from any country. But the money goes so far. And if you can send a little bit of money to buy cookies and teas and coffee so that people can meet up in a community center, maybe even rent the community center for them because you can't take for granted that everyone in the world has access to a community center with Wi-Fi. Many wealthy countries, a person can go into the library and access Wi-Fi and access reading materials. There's a lot of places where you have to pay for access to public spaces or community spaces. And if we can send some money to these places and then make sure that cookies and coffee are on the table, then local community organizers can go into these spaces and organize whatever conversation they want and whatever activities they want. And we want them to have in their toolkit the ability to edit Wikipedia because I believe, we believe that anyone in the world should have access to reading Wikipedia and editing Wikipedia. And this is the kind of support that we, we want to get out. Make sure that people have access to a community center and the tools by means of which they can express themselves and participate in this free and open knowledge base that, that is Wikipedia. What I've told you is a general schema for Wikimedia affiliate organizations, Wikimedia community organizations. There's other names for these. In the platform, it's called user groups or chapters or thematic organizations. When registers to become an official organization in this collective network with in, in the Wikimedia platform, in the Wikimedia movement, you become this uh, official, official organization. You establish your membership processes. We respect democracy. E elections are in, em emphasized, required, strongly encouraged. Do an election. Practice democracy. Get a little access to money. Not to replace volunteer labor, but to amplify it, support it. Enable it to happen. See where it takes you. I do this because I believe in this. I do this because when I was younger, I didn't have access to basic information about LGBT issues. And if I had this information, then problems that I experienced in my life would have been lessened or non-existent. I wish for everybody to have access to good information about LGBT issues and anything else that's important to them. I want everybody's safety. I want everybody to be represented and heard and to be able to participate and share in this amazing digital bounty that we have through Wikipedia, where you have an online platform that produces resources for free to anyone who can access them through a device. There is seemingly infinite wealth creation happening right now in terms of thinking about when people used to have to buy books to learn things versus now we can share information globally through a nonprofit project like Wikipedia. If you're interested in Wikimedia LGBT, I encourage you to apply for membership. If you're interested in other topics, check out the list of Wikimedia affiliates, see how they work. I've given you the pattern. Thanks so much for your interest.